In the early 70s, OPEC didn't like what we were doing in Israel. Same old story. And so they cut off our oil supplies. So some of you will remember these long lines at the gas stations. And we feared we were going to have another depression, like the 1929 depression. And so the U.S. Treasury Department came to me and other economic hitmen and said, listen, you know, we can't allow OPEC to blackmail us anymore. You guys got to come up with a plan so this will never happen again. We knew that that plan had to involve Saudi Arabia because it had more oil than anybody else. We did the deal we finally struck with the House of Saud was a deal whereby they would return almost all the money they made from selling oil to the United States invested in U.S. government securities. The U.S. Treasury Department would use the interest from those securities, which over the years has amounted to trillions of dollars, to hire U.S. companies to westernize Saudi Arabia, build petrochemical complexes, desalinization plants, whole cities out of the desert, McDonald's and all the other things that go along with our Western culture. The House of Saud would also agree to keep the price of oil within limits acceptable to the oil companies, possibly not acceptable to you and me, but acceptable to the oil companies. And this is very, very important. They, would, they agree that they would never, ever sell oil for anything other than U.S. dollars. It was an amazing deal, the deal of the century. It was history-making, incredibly powerful deal that we struck with Saudi Arabia. The corporatocracy looked at this as an incredible success. I had done my job. We economic hitmen did a great job with that one. So we decided that Saddam Hussein ought to accept something very similar. Now probably a lot of you know that Saddam has been our boy for a very, very long time. Uh, you may remember uh, Abdul Karim Qasim, who was president of Iraq in the early 60s. Qasim came up with a unique concept. He said, Iraqi oil ought to go to benefit the Iraqi people. How novel is that? But we didn't like that very much. He began to tax the oil companies, particularly the British and some American companies, and threatened to nationalize our oil companies. And so we decided that Qasim had to go. We, the CIA sent an assassination team. It was headed by a man who was still going through high school, an Iraqi citizen who was still going through high school. Uh, they, uh, they riddled Qasim's car with bullets on the streets of Baghdad and missed him. The head of this assassination team was wounded and fled to Syria. His name was Saddam Hussein. He was a CIA agent in those days, an assassin for us. He failed. He was our boy. He was our man. And so, in the, and we sold him a lot of, and gave him a lot of tanks. We built him Bechtel, built him big chemical, I don't know, my father-in-law was chief, chief architect at Bechtel, built Saddam big chemical plants that were used, and we knew that they were used to make mustard gas and other chemical weapons that were being employed against the Kurds and later the Iranians. We knew this, but we sold them these things. You have to remember that Middle Eastern oil is the oil that's used by a great deal of Europe and China and Japan. If we control Middle Eastern oil, we control our biggest potential competitors, Japan, China, Europe. So it's very important that we do that.